where I live in that I live on like an island site with roads all the way around literally 50 foot behind and 50 foot in front and then it's a little island no one does wildlife gardening except me I've got a pond and only two frogs every year I get a clump of frog spawn which I have taken out and put into this tank so I'm assuming from that that I have probably only one female in the area and a minimum of one male so I only ever get one clump so there's no genetic diversity so what I've done is I've gone inland and I found a beautiful a massive pond it's about 100 150 feet across and the and the shoreline is covered in frog spawn so I've took some parts of two or three clumps very carefully and I'm gonna mix them in with mine bring them on I've actually I know what to feed uh, frog spawn uh, or at least tadpoles after doing a, um, a video which I'll put at the end which was really really interesting um, so I'll feed them on and hopefully I'll get a really high success rate in the wild it's less than 10% but here it will probably be over 90 because they won't eat each other there'll be no newts predating them and I did check by the way that there were no newts in my pond because I didn't want to affect them I've never had a newt here unfortunately so these are the ones I'll mix them in and then I'll do a few videos of them coming on and feed them up and then when it's time to release I'll re release most of them at the back of that pond so I'll introduce my tadpoles genetics into that pond as well it's all local by the way I wouldn't drive far for this it's within walking distance and then some of the frogs the the, the baby frogs froglets don't know I uh, uh, obviously there'll be th hopefully three different types I'll keep like 50 and, and release them here to improve my diversity in the in this little island site so yeah this is just a fish tank look little fish tank don't need any filter really change take a scoop full of water out every week and put rainwater in um, and obviously I've taken some vegetation from the pond too so that will oxygenate oxygenate it but rock in the middle for when the tadpoles uh, uh, when the frogs are, uh, we need to come out of the water but I don't know what I did I have done this before I think I released them when they were getting front legs they still had their tails but they had front and back legs I think that's what I did but I'll play it by ear so I'll just put the camera down and throw these in one sec um, always put the frog spawn on top of the vegetation because that's what they do in the wild and then it warms in the Sun doesn't sink to the bottom it wouldn't be the a problem in this tank because the tanks not very deep but if I put it over here actually you'll see it better there we go there you go it's raised the water level a bit as well so yeah I will uh, keep you up to date with what's going on do a few shorts and stuff just to show you how they're coming along but hopefully it will improve both the, the amount of the diversity the genetic diversity in my area and the number of frogs generally because obviously they're suffering at the moment I read on the news the other day they're like massively declining so I've tried to be less as less uh, kind of you know putting the in, interfering with nature as I as I can um, my pond's tiny so um, and there's nothing in it other than this so it won't affect it other than, other than the fact that they eat more slugs there's not really any negative impact from having more frogs especially when you consider that you know we decimate the population just with being here like driving around and you know not and getting rid of nature and not having wildlife ponds and filling them in and having very few in people's gardens anymore and they are really suffering this year so if I can create a hundred frogs from this that can only be a good thing but anyway thanks for watching and uh, I'll speak to you soon